these people I can't stand either. So, yeah, at the other hand, I don't want to be like, you know, I'm basically a humanitarian. So I, I don't want to relish the deaths of these people. Um, but at the same time, these people seem to relish the idea of genociding Jews. And so it's like, it's a real ethical quandary for me. Like, I, I just don't like the moral asymmetry, right? If you're just talking about making peace with Israelis, yes, this would be a moral outrage, but you're not, right? At least the leadership's not. It's always death to Israel, death to Jews. And so it just makes it really hard for me to be empathetic, even though all of my sort of instincts are to be empathetic. Does that make sense? Uh, would you would you prefer a male boss or a female boss? Excellent question. The old me would have preferred a female boss, but the new me would prefer a male boss. And not only that, I don't think women should be allowed to work. Oh God, <laughs> God forbid, this is how. <laughs> that's how. That's how. Like profoundly, my. Uh, thinking on this has evolved, you know, so, or devolved, depending on your perspective. So why? Why do you prefer a male boss to a female boss? Because male bosses can cut to the chase and do what needs to be done without the sentimentality that female bosses bring. But male bosses aren't as nurturing. They aren't nurturing. It's painful working for like a really good, effective male boss, right? Someone who's act truly on top of their game, yeah, and not not uh, not accepting of any bullshit. Excuse my language. Um, these are the people that make effective companies. Uh, female bosses, sort of like to nourish, as you say, are nurturing. They like, they put up with sort of subpar. It's very funny. They'll put up with subpar performance, but then they'll snap. Yeah. You know, they're just, uh, they're not, they're less predictable than a, than a male boss. And sometimes it's like the predictability uh, actually makes it clear about what your um, role is. And what you need to do, what you need to, to accomplish to not be the recipient of wrath, you know. And once you know those rules, you can just get your done, your work done effectively and efficiently. Um, so yeah, this notion that female bosses are somehow better is not true because they, they lead to a sort of miasma, like a company becomes a. a um, uh, a, a miasma of um, just false starts in a just chaotic decision making, just not clear. But I have to say, like male bosses can go over the line and be inflexible and therefore not pivot when they need to pivot. So yeah, I don't we're talking about simple. we're talking about some gross generalizations. We're talking about tendencies. We recognize for every cliche that we say about male or female bosses that there are, you know, a great deal of exceptions. But uh, who do you think is more likely to take offense at something that you might regard as trivial, a male boss or a female boss? Mm. Well, my first instinct is to say female bosses, but then upon reflection, and thinking about my actual work experience, I find that a lot of male bosses are uh, prone to paranoia. Have you ever worked for somebody who is paranoid? Yes. And I don't detect, I haven't experienced like a paranoid female boss. Yeah. And paranoia is, it's hard to be around. 
it creates a lot of stress, you know. Uh, what about taking, I things, taking huh? things personally? Who's more likely well, to take things personally? Uh, yeah, female bosses will take things personally, but a paranoid person will take everything personally. Um, mm, Who's more likely to micromanage? Mm, male like, bosses. Male boss? Oh, that's not my not my experience. It's like that's it's not your experience. Ex it's it's an extension of nurturing right i think female bosses are a lot like mothers and male bosses are a lot like fathers so female bosses tend to be more nurturing which also comes with the downside of, of smothering and smothering and micromanaging i think are synonyms like who's more likely that's a fair to point. say copy that's me point. on every email. I, I agree. let you're me right. know everything that you're doing all right that's much more Ooh. likely to be a female boss than a, than a male boss I I agree. I think you're right. And I'm wrong. The more I think about it, you're exactly right. Um, male bosses are more or less interested in the actual outcome. They're not so much interested in the sort of day to day process. They're more transactional, and female bosses are more relational. Yeah, relational. And I, I've been fired by a female boss just because she didn't like me. Yeah. Who's yeah. more likely to fire you just because they don't like you, a male boss or a female boss? It's a female boss. Yeah. Sure. You make somebody uncomfortable. And, right. and who's going to who's going to reward and even demand conformity more likely, a male boss or a female boss? Obviously, you know, females prefer people coloring, you know, within the lines. They they have a much mm. greater need for conformity. That's why female students tend to do better at school. Because they're much more likely to color within the lines. Yeah, that's definitely female bosses as well. I, I think that was my problem. That was, because I was, I, I don't, I didn't, and I still don't really dress particularly well. You know, I dress kind of sloppily, and my hair's often a bit messy. And this rubs. Yeah, who's I that more like? Who is that li more likely to upset, a male or a female boss? Yeah, a female boss for sure. Yeah. yeah. Who's more likely to be upset that you don't participate in company extracurricular activities? Yeah, totally female boss. A male boss is, that's truly results oriented will just make it clear what needs to be done and not give and a, just, and not then not give care a how it about gets anything done. else, yeah. You know. And that's the environment I prefer to work in. I've never had a male boss say, copy me on every single email that you send. No, right. Exactly. Exactly. No, I've, I've never had that happen ever in any case. But, uh, you know, money talks, bullshit walks. So if you can deliver the goods, you know, a male boss doesn't care how you got there. Because they're, the, they're not there to make friends. They're not there to, you know, create a relationship, any of this stuff, right? They just stay there yeah. for the outcome. And in a way, there's a certain peace in that. Yeah, who's more likely to say, we want you to bring your whole self to work? <laughs> <laughs> and be, who's more likely to then get offended if you ever dared to do that? <laughs> exactly. They want, yeah, no, feel, but, you know, I've told you my stories about my problems with that's why I, I thought you'd be the perfect person to yeah. talk to. Like, who, who's more likely to say, you know, this little thing that you're doing, it's, it's, you got to cut that out, right? It's, it's, so I had a female, I probably told you this, but I had this female boss that um, we just didn't gel into personally. And she was a bit of an imposter. And she could tell that I knew that she was a bit of an imposter. And, but I never really said anything, but there were certain, you know, facial expressions that kind of betrayed the truth. <clears throat> and so once during a meeting, uh, she interrupted me while I was giving my report and I sort of called her out on it. And then right in the middle of the meeting, she just stands up and gives me the finger. <laughs> <laughs> so who's more likely like, to do that? Yeah, male or female Like boss. Eight, eight people at least, right? Just She stands up and gives me the full-on finger, you know, 
and uh, which was just like so unbelievably out of line in this particular setting. And yet she received no, you know, no, uh, there's no blowback that came to her that I was aware of for this uh, basically atrocity. It's, she came like, she was basically almost like pulled out a handgun, you know, it was like that bad, you know, and nothing came of it, you know, like women have this aura of, of impunity and invincibility and untouchability that they could just say and do things that men simply cannot do. <laughs> Very Question fun. in the chat, uh, Chad, how often do female bo bosses manipulate their employees through erotic power? I have never once seen a female boss try to manipulate male employees through erotic power. It, virtually all the female bosses I know have been without eros. Uh, I believe that's true. Yeah. Yeah. Um, female bosses would just, and they would like have breakdowns, you know? Full on emotional breakdowns. <laughs> it's like, uh, which put, which is intensely awkward. I don't know. Uh, much right. more into team building, like team building exercises. Yeah, they they they're, they're they're. I'm not feeling the love, you know. They'll say. <laughs> or you know, all of their speeches somehow feeling based. Like I'm not feeling this right now. <laughs> or much more likely to have speech codes explicit or implicit but to actually enforce them yeah yeah now, now i worked in real estate once i tell you this like three months in real estate and this i worked for this paranoid lunatic you know who i hated who i would not mind watching be beheaded i mean i hate this oh guy. god forbid I hate this guy so much, you know. At the same time, you know, there's there was something about the authoritarian nature of the way he ran the place that it did actually function efficiently. Um, but it, I hated myself every minute I was there. Yeah, I noticed men are much more comfortable with hierarchy and, and mm -hmm. male bosses in general. And women bosses much more want to create a sense of uh, set some sense of egalitarianism that goes hand in hand with much more clickishness so that you know other people who get into their click are favored while i notice male bosses are just much more transactional and results oriented yeah i had a female boss and she had like a um i don't know what the word is it's not a mole or a freckle it's bigger than a freckle it's like a, a just a facial um what's the word impairment or disfigurement like a, mm -hmm. a just a giant disc coloration by her lip mm -hmm. and it just it was like an eye magnet it was so yes. like off-putting right i couldn't help but look at it you know and um just the presence of this it it sort of distracted my attention while talking to her because I was trying not to look at it. I was trying not to have any relax reaction to it. I was trying to just not see the elephant in the room, you know, but the elephant was right there, always like wagging its trunk at me. And I think this unease that this thing caused created this friction between us that ultimately led to my being uh, axed. Because I couldn't like suppress my discomfort. Have you ever had that situation? Uh, probably. I, I can't recall one right now. But, but I mean, disfiguring marks on someone's face are highly discombobulating. And, and people who commit murder are dramatically much more likely to have you know some kind of disfiguring scar uh, or something on their face than than normal. Like it, it's it's a freaky thing. Yeah, otherwise she was pretty attractive, but she had like this Achilles heel, this flaw, you know? And I wasn't trying to, I just didn't want to be, it's not like I was looking at her in any way that wasn't professional. It was just, it was a fact of her face, you know, that was hard to, that couldn't be ignored. And God, what a curse that must be to have that. 
So all the all the teachers that I had the closest uh, relationships with were male teachers, like the teachers who regarded me the most highly, because the the many of my male teachers noticed that I challenged them more than any other student they'd ever had, and they said that partly in admiration, you know, and a large part in annoyance. But for my female teachers, getting challenged or my female bosses getting challenged was not something they enjoyed. Yeah, yeah. Women are definitely in an authoritarian mindset when they are when they are um, giving instruction. So they're they're basically it's the mother child dynamic that they have, and they don't want to take any lip from their children or their employees. And yeah. they and that's sort of the pet pattern from which they operate. And um, they're all lovey-dovey until you step out of line. And then it's like, <laughs> you yeah. know, hell gets, you know, on, 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 uh, you know, the gates of hell become opened. Right. Oh. Men, men, to be a man is to generally enjoy competition and to understand that there are rules for competition. Uh, women generally don't like competition. And so mm. when they are forced to compete, they, there aren't any rules. Like as as a male, we're raised with rules for how to compete since a very early age. But when women unexpectedly find themselves in in a competitive mode, they tend to to not follow any rules. Yeah, you know, years ago I, I went on this reading binge when I was still an active reader, and I read Tacitus, mm-hmm. like the whole works of Tacitus, and Tac- Tacitus observed that. Women that rose to power in the Roman Empire were the most sadistic in their, you know, in their um, dispensation of punishments. <laughs> you know, they, you know, men could show like Caesar was actually quite forbearing with his enemies. It was sort of led to it, which actually was a, a feature of his um, personality that allowed him to rule. Because he would sort of co-opt his his competition and get them to fight for him, uh, and he was he was not particularly punitive. But Tacitus have observed that women were generally um, very sadistic in their uh, when they had power, and I, it makes sense to me. They don't like to be crossed. And and what about female teachers versus male teachers? I had many wonderful female teachers. But uh, yeah, overall, I, I did better in school and I had better relations with my male teachers. Uh, that sounds true to me. Um, I remember being like 13 years old and having a uh, English teacher in high school. And there was definitely like some personal animus between us that was kind of emotional in nature. Female um, teacher. Female teacher, yeah. And this never happened between male teachers. Yeah. Male teachers were just very, um, just dispassionate, you know, and authoritative. And I had, I, I had a really, I had a really good, I was pretty lucky looking back on it. I mean, I, you know, about my, my high school experience was actually pretty good, I think, compared to most because. I have a lot of fond memories of high school, both teachers and personal, interpersonal with friends and things. Um, would, would you get into power struggles with your teachers? That happened to me a lot, but particularly with female teachers, but also men. Maybe not except for this one particular one, um, but it's not worth, it's not worth lamenting. So I, I see similar, similar, things going on between female teachers and female bosses versus male teachers and male bosses, because I think the, the number one most important factor here is that there are significant differences between men and women in how they operate, whether they are bosses or, or parents or, um, you know, athletes that, uh, the male f- female difference is a significant one. So do you think, uh, female teachers and female bosses, very similar psychology, very similar, sociology yeah i mean i think the paradigm is obviously like women operate from a familial the the familiar familial uh 
relational. Yeah. Well, yeah, mother child, familial. Yeah. And men operate from like a militaristic or a you know hierarchical uh dispassionate approach. And um I don't know, men just kind of I think naturally fall into line. They just naturally can accept hierarchy. It's like this sort of recessive gene that gets triggered when you're in like a very uh, stark hierarchical environment, even if you're not particularly militarily inclined. You just kind of recognize the pattern and then you uh, adhere to it. And when did you get your first male teacher? Do you remember the grade? Um, yes. Uh, probably sixth or seventh grade. Yeah. And out of all your teachers, who are you closest to? Do you remember one, one or two particular teachers? I had a history teacher that I was pretty close to on a personal basis. And then I had math teachers that were, um, I found to be like really exhilarating as a child, as a, as a high school student, like, um, I, I found math really enjoyable in high school. It was such a, like, it was such a pleasure, you know? Uh, and re recently I, you know, I've started looking up somehow these math problem videos come up on my YouTube feed. Have you watched any of these? No, no, I know. I mean, most people are like really traumatized by math, but, there was always things that I didn't feel like I learned well enough in high school. And now I'm sort of kind of relearning them just as a sense of nostalgia and vengeance. <laughs> I, I just want to sort of fill in the gaps because I feel like I'm, I feel like I missed a few strategic, like a few key concepts in my math career, quote unquote that had I mastered them earlier and not missed them and not misunderstood them, I would have just been much better. Uh, I, I just would have like had, had much more success in the math field. So anyway, I've been watching these videos and they're just kind of really relaxing to watch, like how to solve particular types of algebra t problems or calculus problems. And uh, it's uh, super <laughs> it's, I, can't, I can't believe that I'm like watching and enjoying it with such pleasure and almost like a, a reverie. Like there is something very satisfying about solving a math problem, you know? Uh, yeah, that's awesome. What, what else have you been listening to online? Uh, you know, I'm listening to less and less stuff online. Like, um, you know, I've basically written off uh, Charles. What's his name? Charles... Moskowitz? No. Charles, oh, Charles, Chuck Johnson, Charles Johnson. Okay. So I've written him off. I, I actually think he's mentally ill and I don't listen to him anymore. I, I don't think he speaks with any authority or credibility. I'm still listening to Richard, but Richard's basically, you know, just kind of a, you know, milk toast cultural critic. But at the same time, I just have sort of this like residual, um habit of listening to Richard. So I yeah. just keep it going. Yeah. yeah. Out of nostalgia for nothing yeah. else. You know, I, I don't know why. Maybe this will come to the end. But I, I become less interested in my own opinions or the opinions of other people. You know, I I I I'm just sort of questioning the value of like, what does it mean to have an opinion and why? Why does it care? Why does it really matter? You know? Like who cares, you know, if I have the right HBD opinion, does it really move the needle anywhere? <laughs> you know, 